this is a demonstration of a duct traverse in a rectangular duct and then in a round duct. And what we're trying to do is determine, this is a cubic foot. We have to determine how many of these cubic feet flow through this piece of duct every minute. Cubic feet flowing every minute. First thing we do is measure the duct. The duct is 36 by 16. That's four square feet. Next thing we do is we use a pitot tube. We park the duct off in six increments across the duct, and we're going to hook our pitot tube, which has a total pressure tip on the end, hooked to here, and static pressure sensors around the ring here that are hooked to here. So we hook our total pressure to the top port on the magnahelic, and we hook the static to the bottom port. The top port is going to push the air, push the arrow this way. The bottom port is going to push it this way, so we're going to be left with a reading in velocity pressure. Total pressure minus static pressure is velocity pressure. Okay? I'm going to do the duct test now. So we have six holes now, all equally spaced, about six inches apart half of the distance between the first hole and the edge of the duct. So we stick the pitot tube in. The air is flowing up the duct here. This is an exhaust duct. The air is flowing up. So we stick the pitot tube in, move two inches, and we read 0 0.10, 0 0.102, 0 0.103, and 0.104. Repeat that, 0 0.01, 0 0.023, 0 0.014, and we repeat that for all six holes. Then, we need to take a static pressure in the duct, and to take the static pressure, because this is a positive, we need to take the tube from the upper port now and put it on the static pressure tip. And we go about the center of the duct to get a reading of 0.25 inches. Okay. The other instrument we could use is a static pressure tip. And the static pressure tip just has sensors at the side, like the pitot tube, it doesn't have a total pressure. So we could, we could use a static pressure tip to take the static pressure if we wanted, just like that. Now you take each one of those velocity pressure readings that you've just recorded. In our case, we'd have 6 times 4. We'd have 24 readings. We take each one of those 24 velocity pressure readings, convert them to a velocity, Take the average of those 24 velocities and multiply it by 4, the number of square feet we have. So, if we calculated 1,100 feet per minute, 1,100 feet per minute times 4 feet squared is 4,400 cubic feet per minute flowing through this duct. Now we have an oval duct. There aren't very many people using oval duct, but if you come across an oval duct, just consider it as two halves of a round duct with a piece of rectangular duct between. So we have the holes for the rectangular duct, and this hole also serves as one of the diameters for the round duct. You'll have a lot of readings, but again, you take the readings, velocity pressure, convert them to velocity, take the average of all your velocities times the area of the duct. Just now we're going to do a traverse in a round duct. And the round duct is just slightly different, same principle. We want to determine how many cubic feet are flowing through this round duct every minute. So just like before, we measure the diameter of the duct. The diameter of the duct is 24 inches. So 24 inches is 
one four square feet or pi square feet. For a round duct, the spacing isn't equal because we want to be at the center of equal annular areas. Remember, we're always trying to determine what's the average velocity in the duct. So it's the same principle. We hook it up the same. Positive, or the total pressure to the top, static pressure to the bottom. Stick it in the duct and measure 0 0.09, 0 0.08, 0 0.075, 0 0.062, okay? And you pull it out and measure at 90 degrees the same set of readings. We also record the static pressure by hooking up the static pressure tip to the upper port of the magnetic and measuring about the center of the duct to see that the static is plus 0.25 inches right here. We could also use the static pressure tip to do this measurement. We get the same 0.25 inches. 0.25. On larger, on smaller ducts, we would take readings on two diameters 90 degrees apart. On larger ducts, we would take three readings 60 degrees apart. Again, we're trying to determine what's the average velocity through the duct. We know the area of the duct is 3.14 square feet. If we measure the velocity here at 1,000 feet a minute, then we determine that right here, the flow rate is... 3,142 cubic feet per minute. Again, a round duct is the same principle, fewer holes, more readings per hole. Okay? And the spacing is according to the chart on page 9, or page 8 in the book. Okay?